Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome to the Worcester School Committee meeting. We are going to uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. Aye. Member Clancy? Here. Vice Chair Johnson? Here. Member Kamara? Here. Member Mailman? Here. Member McCullough? Here. Member O'Connell Novick? Here. Mayor Petty? Here. Okay. First motion is the uh, consent decree. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed so ordered. Item for reconsideration to commit as a body and as individuals to the State School Committee Code of Ethics. Contained in policy BCA. Roll call. Member Clancy? No. Vice Chair Johnson? We yes. Member Kamara? Yes. Member Mailman? Yes. Member McCullough? No. Member O'Connell Novick? No. <laughs> Mayor Petty? No. Okay. Item fails. Recognition to recognize Jennifer and Michael Cormier, founders and coaches of the Forest Grove Middle School softball program, and Nicholas Chacharoni, founder and coach of the Forest Grove Middle School school baseball program. Mr. Chacharoni, if you want to come up. On oh, the car music here too? Who's speaking for this? <laughs> Mr. Corman, it's good to see you in good setting here today. Good and yourself? Jeff, good to see you. Okay, um, Madam Superintendent? Yes, so I want to thank Dr. Morris for the information that he provided. I kind of condensed and included. I want, to join, I want everyone to join me in recognizing Jennifer and Michael Cormier. Did I say it right? Cormier, apologies. Founders and coaches of the Forest Grove Middle School softball program and Nicholas Cecharoni, founder and coach of the Forest Grove. Did I do it okay, Nicholas? Okay, good. Uh, 
coach, a, a founder and coach of the Forest Grove Middle School baseball program. And so over the past two years, softball and baseball has been added to the after school offerings for students. Uh, these opportunities would not have been possible without the time and tremendous effort of the parents and community members who have each assumed all the work involved in organizing and coaching the teams. And in the case of the baseball team, this volunteer effort included personal paying for transportation to get students to and from the games and for umpires to officiate. Jennifer Cormier, Michael Cormier, and Nicholas Ciacciaroni are recognized and celebrated for their leadership, generous sharing of their time, talent, and treasures, and commitment to Forest Grove Middle School scholars which allowed these youth to proudly represent their school on both the softball and baseball diamonds. So thank you for your belief in our scholars. Hang on one second. So uh, I know uh, Member McCullough has a few words. Member McCullough has been pushing middle school sports, one of the big reasons why we have it. So uh, Member McCullough. Thank you so much, and I can certainly not take credit for the work that the Cormiers and uh, Mr. Ciacciaroni have done. Middle school sports is something that I have definitely been pushing for since I got on the committee, and I know that I have the support of all of my colleagues when it comes to that, and really could not do this type of expansion, expansion without the support of parents and community members. I know the Cormiers have children of that age range, but Mr. Ciacciaroni himself, student, his children are older and in college, and he's still committing time to the students in the Worcester Public Schools to help them get the exposure to additional sports at earlier ages, which we know we want to see continue to expand throughout all of our middle schools and work for additional funding as a committee in order to ensure that those continue to grow and are sustained because we know how important the additional extracurricular activities are to the development of our students. But really can't thank all of you enough as parents and community members for really all of the time that you've dedicated to our students and helping us along the way because obviously we need our community to be supporting us in the work that we do here um, as part of the committee and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to say too, I've known Nick Chacharoni for a number of years. I've met Michael and Jennifer for uh, the last few years and uh, I just want to say thank you, not for this for Forest Grove, for everything you did for sports in the city of Worcester, especially in the Jesse Piquette neighborhood, whether it be baseball, softball, taking care of the fields, <laughs> making sure everything is right for the tournaments. Uh, it's much appreciated on behalf of the city of Worcester. And uh, your job is one of those, it's almost like the mayor job, it can be thankless sometimes when you're, <laughs> when you're, when you're, head, of the, when you're head of the Little League. And, uh, but you do a good job, so I just want to thank you. And uh, so I just want to, uh, first we have a Worcester School Committee Certificate of Recognition presented to Jennifer Cormier, founder and coach of the Forest Grove Middle School Softball Program for your dedication establishing a softball program for the students of Forest Grove Middle School. So I'm by myself, the superintendent in the Worcester School Committee. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> we all have the same with uh, Michael Cormier, a certificate of recognition presented to Michael Cormier, founder and coach of the Forest Grove Middle School softball program for your dedication to establishing a softball program for students of Forest Grove Middle School. So I'm by myself, the superintendent in the Worcester School Committee. Thank you. And Nick, certificate of recognition presented to Nicholas Ciacciaroni, founder and coach of the Forest Grove Middle School Baseball Program for your dedication in establishing a baseball program for the students of Forest Grove Middle School. Nick, thank you very much. Nick, we're good. Yeah, let's get a picture in the middle. Why don't you guys get in the middle, we'll get around you. <laughs>
one more item of business. We have a motion to execute the contract of employment between the Worcester School Committee and Dr. Tammy Murray for the position of Director of Special Education Intervention Services for the period of September 25th, 2023 through June 30th, 2026. Roll call. Member Clancy? Yes. Hang on one minute. Hang oh, on. Oh, sorry. Wait, uh, Is, is Susan there or is Sue there? Is Sue right there? Yeah, yeah. So we have a motion to ex execute the contract of employment between the Worcester School Committee and Dr. Tammy Murray for the position of the Director of Special Education and Intervention Services for the period of September 25th, 2023 through June 30th, 2026, roll call. Member Clancy? Yes. Vice Chair Johnson? Yes. Member Kamara? Yes. Member Mailman? Yes. Member McCullough? Yes. Member O'Connell Novick? Yes. Mayor Petty? Yes. Okay, so we have uh, public comment. Some people have two minutes, just need you. Mr. Chair? Um, I believe motion to suspend the rules to reconsider the previous vote oh. so it can be re executed. <laughs> roll call. Member Clancy? Yes. Vice Chair Johnson? No, hang on. So this is, oh. Uh, Motion I see, was to yeah. suspend the rules. I get, yeah, you're right, I'm wrong. I'm used to the city council side. Can you like re, re go over city sentence again? So basically this is a motion to suspend the rules so we can take it. the next vote is to reconsider. So there's two votes. Okay. Go ahead, Member Clancy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Member Clancy? Yes. Vice Chair Johnson? Yes. Member Kamara? No. Member Mailman? Yes. Member McCullough? Yes. Member O'Connell Novick? Yes. Mayor Petty? Yes. Now the motion is to reconsider. Member Clancy? No. Vice Chair Johnson? No. Member Kamara? Yes. Member Mailman? No. Member McCullough? No. Member O'Connell Novick? No. Mayor Petty? No. Okay. Now we have public comment. Hi, good evening, Mayor Petty, Superintendent Menares, and the school committee members. Um, my name is Melissa Verdier. I am the EAW president, and I am a, Worc a Worcester resident. Uh, I come before you tonight because we have, in the past year, settled some really historic contracts, and we are still in the midst of negotiation for our transportation team. So I would like to say that transportation employees, both our bus drivers and our monitors, are the first educators our students see every day and the last educators they see every day. And it's really important that we remember the historic contracts that we have settled when we're, we're talking about transportation and the negotiations that they're going through. Their contract ended June 30th, so they are currently without a contract. And we would like um, for the school committee and the EAW to get together and settle this contract in a timely manner for fair contract wages. Thank sure. you. Thank you. This is your name and city of residence? Good evening, Mayor Petty, Superintendent, Monaris, and school committee members. I am Ram Metal, city of Worcester, and I'm a bus driver. I'm the first and the last educator to start and end the school days for kids. We have been negotiating for over 10 months now. It's hard to see the school committee take 600,000 from transportation for other budgets, areas, as we are in the middle of negotiation. We are not fully staffed and need more drivers and monitors. Other employers are increasing wages and benefits. We have lost staff to AA, NRT, other companies. We work early, late, and for some of us, midday. Our rounds can start at 6 a.m. and go to 10 a.m. We have to be able to, for midday runs and early release days Delayed starts in the winter, and then the normal afternoon ends, times, and after school runs. That means we are on the road 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., or late at times. We can't just pick up uh, 
second jab for an hour or two between rounds in the middays of the day. Thank, Thank you. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Gracie Jaques y soy chofera del distrito de Worcester. Nosotros somos la primera que recibimos a los niños en el principio del día y somos los últimos en despedirlos a su casa. Muchos de nosotros hemos estado de acuerdo en soportar eh, profesionalmente el proyecto de ley y derecho del distrito escolar. Uh, y el, el distrito escolar parece no estar de acuerdo en que nosotros recibimos una condición o ellos piensan que nosotros recibimos lo suficiente eh, en transportación. El costo de esta vida de housing no somos, no podemos vivir con el costo que ha subido en esta ciudad de Worcester. Muchos de nosotros no hemos visto que hemos tenido que agregarnos a programas de ayuda porque no es suficiente lo que estamos ganando en transportación o, o en cualquier otro trabajo. Okay. Trabajamos altas horas, temprano, y salimos bastante tarde, muy tarde. Hacemos mid-days. Nuestra ruta empieza a las 6 de la mañana, sigues hasta las 10 de la mañana. Tenemos que estar accesible para hacer algunos mid-days. Eh, para hacer delays en el invierno tenemos que también entrar en la tarde para también limpiar este los autobuses cuando están llenos de nieve o sea que hemos sido estamos siempre presentes para hacer el trabajo que se nos pide sea el trabajo que sea cuando no hay trabajadores que es, están ausentes un exceso de, de, de empleados que no entran a trabajar, muchos de nosotros somos los que estamos disponibles para cubrir esa ruta, para que cada estudiante llegue a su casa sanos y salvos. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Good. Yep. All right, my name is Nick Wurst, a uh, resident of Worcester. Um, I'm a union railroad worker and a member of the Independent Socialist Group, and I'm a proud graduate of the Worcester Public Schools. Uh, when I went to school, um, I was lucky enough to be close enough to walk to elementary school and to high school, uh, but for the two years when I went to middle school, uh, I took the school bus every day to Forest Grove. Those are, these workers are essential workers who are entrusted with children who were responsible for getting me and all of my fellow students and you know the current students now uh, to school safely every day. The jobs they do give working parents a little bit less to worry about and a little bit more time to get ready for their own jobs, to pick their kids up, to, um, to get ready for the day. And they have a hazardous job. When I was in school, I saw my own share of fights and disruptions, even on the school buses. Uh, and I think it's interesting, the public, the WRTA bus drivers have been picketing outside of the Union Hub, uh, Union Station Hub, for safe staffing levels and safe working conditions because there have been attacks there as well. And so I think these workers are just as important as every other educational worker and every other worker in the city, and that they deserve a living wage, they deserve safe staffing levels, 
good benefits, good future, and safe jobs. And so I want to speak in support as a former student and as a fellow union member and worker of all of the bus drivers and monitors of the list of public Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for uh, coming out. I appreciate it. We all set, Melissa? Okay. Oh, we have one more? Okay. It's oh, no, about buses. We can speak. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, it's something completely different, right. although I'm fully in support of these guys back here. Mm -hmm. um, my name is... Um, my name is Maya Desai. I noticed lots of friendly faces around the room here. I'm a 20-year resident of Worcester. One of my kids graduated from Burncoat in 2022, and the other is a 10th grader. But today, I'm here in my capacity as a volunteer supporting the Afghan refugee folks. Um, m many, many, many children are in the Worcester Public Schools right now. And I would like to begin by saying that um, what Worcester Public Schools has done for these kids is nothing short of miraculous. It's truly amazing, particularly through the NCC, the New Citizen Center. It's just been a joy to work with them. Um, and you all should know that for some of the girls in particular, never would have never went to school before they got here. And um, the work that's happened for them over the past 18 months is just, you guys should be really proud. Um, even though I'm talking about the Afghans, I also would like to extrapolate their experiences to the other immigrant communities, cultural communities. Um, and so relative to item 3-218, um, Molly helped me bring these items to the agenda. Um, I'm interested to see uh, world-focused school nutrition improve um, for school meals and snacks. Um, many of the children I'm supporting uh, follow a halal diet, and right now they're really not eating much at school, and that's, that defeats the whole purpose of a free lunch program. Um, I would request that as this, this program evolves, the um, cultural leaders and religious leaders are incorporated into this process so that kids can feel confident that they're getting the diet that they need. Um, relative to item 3-220, um, this is a little out of order. I was introduced to a young man this summer, a young adult, um, who fell through a bureaucratic loophole as he was moving from NCC secondary school out. Um, he was really hoping to go to North High School, and um, North High School bureaucratically couldn't take him. He ended up with a school home, but he was on the brink of getting lost in the system. He was on the brink of walking away from school and not coming back. And so that, that loophole needs to be solved so that we don't lose kids, um, and I can provide additional details. Item 3-219, um, um, <clears throat> about six months ago, I believe, Worcester Public School received a grant from the Commonwealth for just under half a million dollars to support Afghan refugee community, and I'm eager to know, um, to see how that's being spent. Um, and I have a ton of ideas, in case you don't. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, I support a union contract for these guys. I just want to thank you for coming out, too, because we work so hard as a city. We're the first city to take the Afghanis into the state of Massachusetts and uh, the Haitians now. And you're so right on the food and the cultural thing. We have an issue now with the Haitians. And, uh, different immigrant groups coming here in the city of Worcester that food sometimes goes to waste because we don't have the right culturally appropriate food. So thank you for reminding us. So thank you. And I just want to thank uh, all the drivers and the monitors and the coming out. And I just want to thank you for the great job you did at the beginning of the school year. This is one of the best school year's openings we ever had. And a lot of it's because of you. So I just want, I just want to say thank you. So that's, that's on behalf of all the parents, the students, and the school committee and the superintendent and Mr. Allen and his group. So thank you very much. It means, it means a lot. And we'll get this done next Monday. See you there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We all set then? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Much appreciated.
Okay, so we have uh, next up we have the uh, we have the report of the superintendent from here to anywhere together with the public schools priority goals for the school year 23-24. Dr. Monarez. Okay, through the chair. So good evening, um, school committee members, Mayor Petty, cabinet, our viewing public. Um, tonight I'll be here, I'm sharing my, um, my proposed goals for this school year. So in August, I did bring to the committee um, some multi-year goals. I call them uh, strategic objectives. And the feedback that I received from the committee at that time was to take a step back, make sure that we are um, actually implementing the work that began this last, last school year, allow for the strategic planning process to proceed, and then to work on really making sure that we have some measurable impacts for this school year. So tonight you're going to hear how I've combined all of that um, requests through what I like to consider bridge goals as we finalize uh, the strategic plan, you're going to see in here that I did not discard those multi-year um, objectives, but I, um, am, I am proposing that these goals that I'm presenting are the ones that I'm evaluated on for this school year. Before I go too deep into this, I want to talk a little bit about the, um, a culture of accountability. And and the difference between accountability in the educational system and account accountability in businesses or um, the business sector. So in the business sector, accountability is measured purely by profits, right? That's how you hold people accountable to the work. Um, and those profits are attained in different ways. Um, but in education, the accountability has to start with relationships. And um, the accountability is nurtured and sustained through relationships and those relationships with staff, relationships with caregivers, families, community, and of course the students that we serve. And as those relationships strengthen and the cohesion in the, the system comes be together better, so it's really about how the adults are working together, that leads to the students doing better um, and that's the accountability we're looking for. And so, um, what we know from past practice is um, in education, a hammer does not work when it comes to accountability. When we want to, if we want to hold people accountable, first and foremost, we must maintain relationships. I share that because um, I believe in accountability very much and I want the school committee to hold me accountable. Um, and I also recognize that in order for that to happen, we have to um, allow the relationships to continue to grow in the district. If we move too fast um, and the accountability starts to become um, a, a punitive measure, then the entire system starts to uh, crumble because trust bro is broken and, um, and at the end then children don't, they don't thrive like we need to. So what I'm presenting tonight as we develop a culture of accountability through relationship building, um, that will then allow us to have greater impact over time. So I, long and short of it is, I need more time before we get too strong on impact measurements okay. because I don't want. Uh, yep, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Okay, so you're correct on us and you're correct We need to mute the you language line. Okay. So you're over your credit limit as we speak now. Oh, we, I am. So okay. Need to mute that. And can, do I qualify for an increase or no? Uh, we can go ahead and submit your request. What do you have as my uh, income? Sure. 
Testing. There we go. Okay. Technical challenges. Is there a way to get that off the screen right there? Okay. There we go. Okay. So, I don't remember where I ended. I think I'll just say that essentially I, we have, I can't go too fast. I definitely have to slow down. Um, I've been sharing with the committee that last year we moved very quickly. This year as we work on um, building those relationships and really strengthening the trust in the, in the district, um, then, that, then the accountability can grow. So with that, I want you to keep that in mind as I share my, my goals. Um, I, oh, I went too fast, there we go. So let me just kind of orientate you to the presentation. Um, there's, of course, four parts. So first I'm gonna outline the leadership standards as they are um, articulated through the um, Massachusetts superintendent model evaluation. Um, then I'll go over the district goals and I actually am providing two goals, um, although I'm by DESE standards only to provide one. I just, there's a second one that we just must have as a district. Um, then I'll go over the student goal and the personal goal. Now each goal I'm providing a context, so like data of some sort to then lead to what the actual goal is, the alignment with the rubric that is part of the model evaluation. Then two types of evidence. So if you'll recall last, um, my previous evaluation, all the evidence that I provided was product-based, right? I gave you a product. This is a combination of both impact and product. And so you'll see that in the presentation. And then I, as I said before, I kept that multi-year objective um, because I do believe that it helps to paint a bigger picture. And it, it will change as we um, finalize, or it may change as we finalize the strategic plan, but at least gives some ideas. So let me start with um, the standards. Again, these standards come from um, the um, model e rubric uh, related to the Massachusetts uh, superintendent evaluation. So standard one um, is around instructional leadership. Uh, I'll read it just because it is a little small for those who are watching. This is the one that says the education leader promotes the learning and growth of all students and the success of all staff by cultivating a shared vision that makes powerful teaching and learning the central focus of schooling. This is um, based off of the committee's feedback to me with the previous evaluation. This is the one that the committee asked that I have um, a deeper dive into for this year. So there was evidence of it last year, um, but more impact as it relates to this one. So you'll see that in my goals. Standard two, management and operations. So this one is promotes the learning and growth of all students and success of all staff by ensuring a safe, efficient, and effective learning environment using resources to implement appropriate curriculum, staffing, and scheduling. So last um, evaluation I had quite a bit in here. I still have at least um, one indicator related to this, but it's how it um, supports standard one. Standard three, family and community engagement, promotes the learning and growth of all students and su the success of all staff through effective partnerships with families, community organizations, and other stakeholders that support the mission of the school and district. So you'll see some evidence of that. And then finally, standard four, professional culture, promotes success for all students by nurturing and sustaining a school culture of reflective practice, high expectations, and continuous learning for staff. So those are the standards, and then remember that there are um, in total 21 indicators within all of those standards. I am, um, you are to evaluate me in each standard with at least one indicator of evidence for each one. Okay, so that's just a reminder. 
So now let me start with the first district goal. And so um, to orientate you to what I'm looking, or what you're looking at, um, this is our current workforce in Worcester Public Schools. And so on top you'll see the different colors, the legend. So the workforce has um, in, I guess that's like a red, the African American uh, workforce representation is in red. Any um, staff that works for us um, that's of Asian descent, and remember this is, they, people self-identify themselves. Um, is in kind of that lime green. Latino Hispanic is in the magenta color. Um, white is in the green. And then multi-race non-Hispanic, that's kind of a, I guess it's kind of a teal. It's down at the bottom. Um, and then female and male, right? So um, female is white, male is blue. So um, when you look at this, what you what stands out as you make sense of the colors, right, is that the majority of our staff um, are the green, which is um, of white ethnicity, and the white um, is, are their females, which is not uncommon to have a very high number of uh, females working in um, education. That's very common um, throughout the nation. What you'll note um, also. So that, that comes to 82% of our staff, of our workforce. And so that's everybody um, reflective in this, not just a classroom teacher, it's everybody that works in our district. Um, and then the numbers below then represent um, the other groups. And so that is 18% um, who are um, identified as um, BIPOC, right? Our, um, black, indigenous, people of color, and again, people who self-identify. Why is this important? Um, because it, it paints a picture of who is educating, who's in front of our students on a regular basis, right? The next slide is then going to show, I see you guys are confused, what's wrong? Oh yes, I had to change those. Yes, yes, follow this one. Yes, don't look at your back, I'm sorry, I should have said that to you. Only on these two slides, I changed some colors. Um, this is the only two slides I did that to, sorry. Yes, follow this one. So, um, so what you see here, this is, this is our workforce, right? Um, now, I wanna remind the committee that when I did my listening and learning tour, um, one of the themes that came out loud and clear from everybody, from staff, from families, from students, um, is that we need um, a more, we need a workforce that more aligns with the student population. And the next slide is going to show that for you. So the next slide, this is our, these are our students, right? So um, the, again, the female is white and the male is blue. So we do have a bit more young ladies than we do have males in Worcester Public Schools. Not huge difference, but we do have that. And then color-wise, um, you can see that the magenta, again, are our Latino Hispanic students, and those numbers have continued to increase. Um, the light green, or that kind of lime green, those are our uh, white students, and you can see that those numbers have decreased. Um, for the most part, um, the red African American has increased somewhat, um, not as rapidly as our Latino, but we have increases there. Um, our Lime green, which is down towards the bottom, right? Um, that's our Asian population. We've actually had a slight decrease. And then the one that tends to um, stay pretty the same, as you can see, is our multiracial one, right? And so lots of different children fit in there. This is, um, so if we pull the numbers, 27% of our student population um, are identified as white and 73% are BIPOC. So it's almost the exact inverse, right? When we think about our, our staff population and think about our student population. And so um, when our students are saying they don't see people that look like them, that's, that's probably pretty accurate, right? Um, now we have, great teachers in our district. We have great people working for us, because again, this is the, the workforce presentate, our numbers were not 
just teachers, it's everybody. Um, but we need to do something about trying to have a, uh, a, a closing of the differences between who is um, working with our students on a regular basis and then who our students are. Representation does matter. And so that's where this goal comes from. So by June 30th of this school year, so 2024, um, ensure a district-wide system for recruitment, hiring, hiring, and retention of a talented, culturally, and linguistically competent workforce through a culture of belonging and authentic engagement. And we measure this by a 10% narrowing of the gap between the overall staff and student demographics. The rubric alignment for that, you could see down in the corner, so this would be um, aligned specifically to the management and operations, um, to BHR, I didn't think that that was important as much as that there's a rubric alignment. And what would be the evidence? So the impact evidence, we will decrease staff, daily staff absenteeism. We believe that that is a good way of measuring um, sense of belonging and how people feel at work. We want to decrease staff grievances at the school level. Again, another way to measure um, how, th how the uh, retention is happening in, in our schools and that there is a positive culture. And then, of course, increase BIPOC staff. So I'm saying we would the, the actual measurement is 10% narrowing of those two groups with some additional um, decreases and increases in different areas. The product evidence, so there's quite a bit of systems work that still needs to happen this school year, um, to develop a Worcester Public School staff cultivation guidebook. This is really talking about um, the work that we need to really go deeper into around equity and, um, and uh, unconscious biases and those type of things. So I want a guidebook that would guide schools and staff um, and district. I want a system, another product would be to have a system to track our retention rates. We, um, we have some of those numbers, but we want to get better at developing a system so that we can use that data to then improve um, why people are leaving and make sure that we're turning that in a different way. We want a system to track the language proficiency of our staff. We currently um, don't have a system in place there. And then we want to partner with institutions or outside community agencies to help develop our staff into a more linguistically diverse community. Um, this one is really about, you know, there, is, there are people who, their home, there's another language spoken, and therefore, as a result, they speak two languages, English and whatever the other language is. But we have people that would like to learn a second language um, who work for us, and we want to, we want to help them with that. And so um, we want to look for some institution or a community partner to help us grow multilingualism um, throughout our district. Um, I was really excited when my um, team came up with that one because it really shows a commitment to multilingualism for all. Um, the multi-year goal that I see this feeding into, so this is what I shared uh, back in August, was the um, goal of honoring, building, and sustaining high-quality leadership across the district that supports authentic engagement and monitors continuous learning of teaching, learning, and a sense of belonging. So that's the goal I see this connecting to. I'm going to go to the next goal now, which is another district goal. Um, I feel like I've been talking about the context of the need for facilities um, for like six months now, so this I didn't put a context on here, um, but we know again this came out in the um, the listening and learning tour the importance of modernizing our facilities. Um, just had to close schools a couple of weeks ago because we don't have air conditioning. We have challenges um, that are really beyond the scope of Worcester Public Schools, and we're working um, collectively with the the city management met again today on this, um, and we're going to have a strategy that we can do collectively, because this is um, not, you know, we don't need to point fingers, we need to just figure out how to make this happen, right? So the goal that I'd like for this year is to strengthen maintenance protocols and implement a, safe, a school safety recommend, and implement school safety recommendations to guarantee the continual modernization of all Worcester Public School facilities 
cultivating an environment that is both secure and supportive of learning by building capacity and val valuing knowledge. And I want you to measure me with that by 100% completion of the highest priority emergency product pro projects that will be identified through the safety audit. So we recognize we haven't given you the safety audit yet. We, um, we do know that they are prioritized and we're saying we're going to commit to the highest priorities, get that, that particular one to get that done at 100%. It aligns with two um, rubric items. One is um, management and operations, so this um, 2A environment. And the other one is family and community engagement, which is 3C on communication, because as part of this particular goal, it is about um, also making sure that we're implementing our safety protocols and working with our families to know what to happen um, in, in the event of an emergency and what their role would be. So that's where the um, family and community engagement comes in. So the impact evidence. Um, in addition to making sure 100% of our highest priority projects are completed, um, we also are prioritizing our high priority projects and that we will respond to them within 72 hours. By either completing that project or um, providing an action plan of how we're going to do it. So what that looks like is many times at schools you get a call or you, something is submitted through our system, um, someone goes out to w fix it Sometimes they can fix it, but sometimes they can't. They need a part, it's just bigger than what they thought, and so that's the action plan part, that our schools know what's going to happen next if it can't be fixed, with, fixed within that 72 hours. So that's the impact, impact evidence. And then the product evidence, we need to create a system to collect and monitor the completed safety trainings and drills. Oops, sorry, click. Um, and we need to create a user-friendly status update system for work order submissions. So we're very committed to um, really making a difference and turning around um, what has really not been a priority or has been ignored um, in the past when it comes to our school facilities. Facilities are just as important as the academic achievement. Where children learn, where staff works makes a difference. Um, I'm really pleased with the uh, work that I've already seen coming out of our facilities team. Um, the commitment is there. Um, they are um, just not just hard workers because we always have hard workers. Um, they're just their commitment to excellence is to be commended. And again, I do want to highlight that um, continue to work with City Manager Batista to really come up with a results-driven commitment to turning this huge titanic of facilities that's needed in Worcester. So that's the second district goal that I am proposing. Um, and the multi-year objective, which I didn't bring last time, but I really thought about what's a meaty multi-year objective that will make a difference for the children in this community you know, three years from now. And um, I do believe that it's to develop and identify ongoing revenue streams for Worcester Public Schools facilities master plan. So we're going to get a master plan done. That's not going to be enough. We're going to need to figure out how do we fund this regularly. Um, and that's going to take um, all hands on deck and all brains working together. But I, I do, that's the legacy that really needs to be left for the, the future generations. So it's a big one, but um, the, the district, we're committed to making this come to be. Those are the two district goals. I'm going to go into now the student goal. And in order to talk about the student goal, I need to um, talk about the accountability system. And so um, DESE, which we know is the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, which um, guides a lot of the policy at the state level, has identified um, a indicators for the accountability system. What you, this pie chart represents here are the non-high school, AKA <coughs> third grade through eighth grade um, indicators. And you can see how it's broken down. So 60% is achievement. That's measured through MCAS. So when you see achievement, in your mind, you should be thinking MCAS. 20% is growth on MCAS. So the achievement, and Dr. Morris, you shake your head if I'm right about this. I think I, I'm, yes, OK. The achievement is um, attaining um, proficient or excelling on it. The, the growth is wherever student was 
did they grow to the next level? So both the achievement and student growth have to do with MCAS. One has to do with actually attaining proficiency or advance. The other one has to show movement. The 10% of the accountability system for our grades three through eight schools um, is English language proficiency, and that is um, how students do on our access, and then find access, which is the language um, acquisition test, and then finally chronic absenteeism. So 10% of that is um, for chronic absenteeism. Um, I want to make sure. So this is something I just want to, for the, the committee to just remember about the students that we serve in Worcester, is we have a very large number of students who um, are uh, language learners. We know that about our community. It's part of the beauty of the community. Um, so when you have a significant language and literacy need, because language and literacy go hand in hand, um, we have to be very intentional about how we're monitoring how children are acquiring the second language. Um, maybe for some of our children it's the third language, but acquiring English and developing their literacy so that they can demonstrate what they know on the MCAS. So we cannot ignore how our children are progressing in English. That's the long and short of it. Um, and as a district, we have not had that as much as a forward-thinking um, part of our work, but we must. Um, it is necessary, not just for our language learners, it's necessary for any child um, be because standards-based instruction requires that children learn new language, new vocabulary, new concepts, and um, developing that language is important. So these are the indicators and the percentages for our schools three through eight in the accountability system. High school looks a little bit different. Um, you can see the achievement, you can see the student growth. So at the high school, again, achievement, student growth, both have to do with MCAS, but the high school, it's 40% um, on the achievement. Then you see high school completion, so that's graduating um, with your peer group on time, what we call cohorts. 10% of the English language proficiency, so again, 10% of the accountability system has to do with how children are acquiring English as measured by the access test. And then 10% have to, it's a combined chronic absenteeism and advanced coursework. So what does advanced coursework include? That includes participation in things like early college, AP courses, Project Lead the Way, dual enrollment, and some other areas that the state um, has identified as advanced course. So that all goes together in that 10%. Um, graduation rates, the high school completion, also includes minimizing our dropout rates. So high schools have a little bit different, um, but you can see how the third through eighth grade leads into the high school. Why is this important? Because for the student goal, this is what I'm proposing, that by June 30th, 2024, so the end of the school year, we will have collaboratively led school teams in identifying and using multiple sources of evidence to assess, respond, and improve outcomes in all schools with an intentional focus on historically underserved youth by building capacity, valuing knowledge, authentically engaging, and creating a sense of belonging as measured by, and this is the accountability part, right? Increasing the DESI accountability score for the schools that are at or below five by four percentile points. Increasing the DESI accountability score for the schools that are between six and 10 by five percentile points. And increasing the DESI accountability score for the schools that are between 11 to 20 by six percentile points. This is where you will see heavy um, alignment to the uh, instructional leadership of the um, rubric because there are three indicators on here that I am saying um, this represents, curriculum assessment and data form decision making, and then also the family engagement with sharing responsibility because as we work through leading teams on how do you use multiple sources of data to assess and really respond, um, that includes including the families in this work. The evidence um, of impact, in addition to moving our schools that are not performing as well as we know that they can, 
um, is to increase third grade reading performance demonstrated by a comparison of how our students did last year at the end of the year using the STAR assessment and how they'll do at the end of this year. We have, um, through the committee's approval, invested heavily in a new uh, language arts curriculum for our elementary schools and we have started training and we're going to keep training our teachers and we do, um, we're putting a lot of eggs in this basket about making sure that our children, are, our third graders are reading at grade level um, because we know that that's so incredibly crucial to them being successful as they move through um, upper elementary and into middle school and high school. In addition, um, additional impact evidence will be to increase the percentage of students who are in grades seven through 12 who self-report, because this is what they do, they self-report on how they are engaged in school as measured by the Worcester Public Schools Culture and Climate Survey, or otherwise known as Panorama. So these two impact evidence points are what we've already shared with our principals at the beginning of the school year. Teaching and learning team has already said, we've got two priorities for this year, improve third grade reading and um, increase engagement at our secondary schools. And this is based off of what has happened since last year and even um, before I started. So. The commitment is here. We know we're going to increase it. We believe in increasing these and working with the teams on how to use multiple forms of data to make informed decisions for children that um, the, all the schools will increase and specifically the schools where, um, that are lower in decile ranking by DESE's accountability system. Products for this because the products really help us with the, evidence, with the systems improvement, is we will have a Worcester Public Schools data literacy guidebook. It's that guidebook that's going to help guide these teams um, and help us to continuously improve um, even into next year and future years. Additionally, um, we have noted, again, because this is where I go back to our language learners, um, that our multilingual education um, department and our staff and um, people at our parent information system could really benefit from an operating manual. Making sure that we're placing children appropriately when they first come into our schools using the home language survey and then monitoring their growth and getting and, and moving children into um, a reclassification status where they are no longer considered English learners. They might still stay in our dual immersion program because that's what the family chooses, but it's our responsibility to make sure our children are progressing with English and starting with an operating manual from our multilingual education program, which once we get our audit, remember we've got an audit that's being conducted right now in the multilingual program, this manual will help to determine what goes in there. And so then the final multi-year objective that again I showed um, in August remains the same, that we're doing this work, really building the data literacy at all of our schools um, by, so that by um, June 30th, in three years from now, so June 30th, 2026, we'll ensure that all K-12 students have equitable opportunities to take ownership of their learning and engage in a variety of rigorous and relevant learning experiences to achieve their personalized goals. So we do believe that that's where we need to go. Our scholars are telling us that school doesn't mean a whole lot to them right now and we need to find ways to keep them engaged. Um, and um, and it, ha it also aligns with the vision of a learner and it aligns with um, the, um, the instructional framework and, and what we know we need to have children ready for um, their future. Uh, and so I, 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 before I go to the next slide, I, wanna I want you to think about this. Um, I'm gonna give you an analogy that I've used a little bit with cabinet. So I'm saying that hold me accountable to moving a small number of schools, a certain number of schools, but know that the whole district will grow in terms of um, learning how to use multi, um, multiple sources of data. It's just the accountability part will be on specific schools. And I like to think about it in terms of having a plate. So the plate is like a dinner plate, right? We only have so much space on our dinner plate. Let's call that space time. We only have so much time to get something done. When you are trying to figure out on that dinner plate 
how much am I going to have um, on this plate because I could only fit so much. So today I'm going to choose to focus more on some green leafy vegetables and lean protein because that's what my need is today. That's the data that is telling us what, and so take that analogy now and shift it to the data-driven work, right? So there's only so much time that we have with our schools so we're going to, when we work with our schools, everybody's going to have the same amount of initial time on how to use data, but then district staff will put additional time priorities, more servings, if you will, for the schools that we're saying need a bit more help. Okay, so everybody gets it all, it's just some get more than others. And um, because we, time is, um, is, is constant. That we never have enough of that. So I don't want you to think that we're not going to work with all the schools. I just want you to measure um, the goal based off of the schools that we're going to move. Okay. Last but not least is the professional goal. So as a um, second year superintendent in Massachusetts, I am required to continue to participate in the new superintendent induction program. I actually had a virtual meeting yesterday. Um, and so I, I will continue to participate in that um, for this year. And the, the products that are, rec are uh, expected is to have what they call a strategic objective, not necessarily a strategic plan. Now in Worcester, we need a strategic plan. So we will have the strategic plan that is above and beyond what is required for NISIP. Um, and that strategic plan will include key performance indicators, AKA data points with a timeline by which we will come back to the committee regularly to let you know how we're doing. So that is my recommendation for my professional goal. You'll see the alignment rubric. It lines with the, um, the, fourth, um, the fourth standard on professional culture, commitment to high standards, and shared vision. With that, I um, want to thank you for listening and look forward to your feedback and questions. Member McCullough, followed Member Clancy. Thank you. <clears throat> I really appreciate that some of the feedback that was given previously when coming forward with these goals was taken to an, into account when you came back to us with this today. So I really appreciate hearing about a lot of the plans for the goals for this year and where we're going as a district. I really think the culture of accountability through relationship building is so important and I think it's something that we've talked about prior to you even getting here was how important those types of steps in this district were going to be. And I certainly understand from your presentation that some of these items aren't necessarily a tangible measurement as much as it is a feeling of belonging and a culture of belonging, but it all plays into what we need to do as far as the goals go and as far as where we need the district to be. Certainly we know last year we moved at a very fast pace and sometimes it was a maybe a little too fast at times, but somewhere where we needed to get so we could have this year after a building year moving forward. Um, you know, morale increase is already evident through work that has been going on, additional work with the contract for support throughout the district and the continual statement from you and the leadership team that we have high expectations, but there will be support that comes along with those high expectations. And that's where we're gonna get to these goals. Um, as far as the presentation regarding our student makeup and our staff makeup, as far as where we are about diversity, I really appreciate that you're giving us a number of the 10% narrowing, narrowing of the gap overall, because obviously we even hear it from our educators that it's crucial for our staff to look more like our student population. Obviously we want the highest quality educators and staff in our system and I think that that can be achieved with increasing the diversity amongst the staff population. One of the things I will say is that there was a lot of work done previously with community groups to encourage that type of situation but I think it just didn't go anywhere. So certainly I know we have a lot of our uh, universities in the city that have worked with us previously and done some of that work. I actually sat on one of the committees a few years ago where we worked with uh, Worcester State and there was a lot of work with DESE as well as members of the community and the district on that and we kind of just didn't segue forward with that because there was a lot of work about getting students not only to realize that education as a career was attainable 
but also desirable, right? And so that's a big thing, I think, for our students because there are so many opportunities out there. So if we can get our students today interested in becoming educators or working in the schools, we'll definitely continue to see a shift where we go with that narrowing of the gap. Um, I think, you know, we've already seen a lot of decrease with grievances, certainly at the school committee level. So to continue to work on that decrease of staff absenteeism, grievances, and increase in the BIPOC um, certainly are things that will continue to serve us well. Um, facilities. I think we know how important that is, that we continue to try to fight for our new buildings, but also how do we continue to support and maintain the buildings that we do have. And I've already seen so many great things with this expansion of the facilities department. And I know personally I've had interactions with some of them and they're so responsive and so understanding and so passionate about where this district is going and understanding the importance of clean, maintained service buildings and how we all work together to get there. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that all plays out as part of the goal as well. Student achievement for all learners as a priority and how do we get there? The importance of reading at grade level and then the 7 through 12 self-report on engagement. I'm looking forward to seeing that data when we have all of that because I think we've really started to see a shift in the culture in the schools. There's a lot of positive feedback of some of the new roles as well and that's how really increasing our student engagement and you know, I've seen some stuff uh, between Burncoat and Doherty and just knowing that there's a lot of excitement from the staff and the students with really being more collaborative and working with the Q teams um, and I think that's definitely an excellent goal for us to be able to see some actual results for at the end of the year. And then certainly the data utilization, I think one thing I've seen this past year out in the district was where schools were actually using their school-based data and using that in the curriculum in their schools and really targeting, like you talked about the plate, right? We know that we only have so much time and that we want all of our schools to be able to achieve success. We have to use that school level data to drive what's going on in those buildings to get our overall data where we need it to be as well. So I think that I'm very happy with the goals and I thank you for the presentation and looking forward to seeing the results. Thank you, uh, Member Clancy. Uh, thank you. And I feel like I'm going to echo everything Molly just said, so <laughs> might as well sit down. Just kidding. Um, in the beginning, you, ta you started talking about um, how it starts with relationships. And um, Superintendent, in your team, I just have to say, it's so different in just the year going into our schools and seeing the excitement, seeing the morale of the teachers and the staff in our schools. And it, you know that it's going to trickle down to our students and then it's going to trickle down to our families and it's going to trickle down to our community. But what you have done in just a year is just, between you and your team, has just been incredible. Um, so I just wanted to start off by saying that. And I appreciate, um, SMART goals, I'm, I'm just, I've never been a fan of them and everyone knows that. Um, but your goals are so clear, they're concise, they're measurable, and you have percentages that I truly believe are achievable. Um, and as part of your evaluation last year, I, I really honed in on starting to see the impacts. How will this impact our students? How will this impact our staff? And I'm truly seeing it this year, which I'm excited about. It's year two and you're really reaching for those goals that we're going to start seeing the impacts on learning. Um, and you're covering things that we've asked for. We've asked for a staff that reflects our students. We've asked for, and I do want to say, I, I know you mentioned that your, your team had brought this up, but the idea that um, your staff really want to be supportive in learning another language and that you're going to find a way to get them involved in that and find a way for that to happen. I think that's fantastic because you're truly listening to what our staff want and to incorporate that in your goals I think is awesome. Um, let me just see. Um, also, the facilities update, I mean, we've talked about how outdated our buildings are. Um, I love that we're getting the updates from administration and FNO, and I think that you, it's great that we're hearing about all the improvements going on. And the turnaround time, 72 hours, I know that's, that's a reach, but I think it's, you know, it's great because I know that our schools are looking for that. How many times have I heard, you know, well, I put a work order in, you know, a couple of weeks ago and I haven't heard anything, I haven't heard from anyone. So I think that's a great um, goal to have. Obviously the third grade reading, because um, I mean, I read your article and I thought that was, you know, it was great to add that to it, you know, just to know how important it is to have strong reading skills by third grade and, you know, it sets a tone for our students for the rest of their education career. I just do have one clarifying question. So on the student goal, um, 
where you talk about increasing the percentages in the different um, schools. The, uh, my question is, would that be part of your evidence? Through the chair, I want to make sure I understand your question. Like, I'll submit something? Is that what you mean? I, well, no, because you're mentioning increasing the DESE accountability score for schools below, at or below five, by four points. So I just, and I'm not, I just didn't know if that was going to be part of your evidence, because it seems like if you're looking to increase that, it could be part of your evidence for this year. It is. As I'm saying that, I'm thinking about what's happening this year. And we're like right now, we don't even have final scores or right. rates. So th that's my only um, pause is, but I think we can find some way to show that, that the, so I'm looking at Dr. Morris, cause like right, Desi doesn't even have it finalized right now for last year's. So I won't be able to submit something by June 30th. I'm realizing as I'm okay. saying this. Yes, so we'll find something that we can, some, that shows movement of these particular schools. And, and, right, and I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know um, Dr. Morris wanted to speak, but. Through the chair, we um, analyzed all of the schools in the state that were within the same accountability percentages as our schools. So we used the same school, similar um, model to compare so that we're able to predict that with the effort of using varied assessments and supports from the Q team and others, that through those efforts and data literacy, we should see an improvement that would mirror schools that perform at a higher accountability level. So I believe some of the evidence that we'll be preparing for all of you is the uh, efforts that we put forward for all of these schools, as Dr. Menares mentioned earlier, um, about the plate, the schools that need the most will get the most, and doesn't mean that everybody isn't going to get what they need, but we're also going to be able to have um, um, benchmarks along the way okay. about how, when we apply an intervention, what the in impact was and how are we measuring progress across all of the indicators. As you saw, three to eight and high school have so many different types of indicators we did not really have a way to have one indicator that we could pull out that was common across all because all of our schools have, as you know, completely and totally different. But those are the types of evidence we believe will show the impact in September next year when we look at accountability levels. But you are absolutely correct. We will not know in June. Okay. Perfect. That's fine. Um, I mean, your professional goal, I mean, year two. I'm, but I, I mean, like I said, I, I'm happy with these. Um, I think we're setting a great, our, you know, a great tone for our schools and just keep up the good work. Like, it, but thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Member Novick. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. And uh, I, I want to echo the fact that I appreciate how much um, we were, our reflections were listened to um, in terms of both the, um, the evaluations and also the, um, the feedback that was given um, during the last presentation. Uh, I, I want to say that overall I agree entirely in terms of the realms and the, the focus areas. I think that, that um, this, is, this is what we need to be looking at um, and that the, the emphasis in terms of the administration is, is, is right on in terms of that. Um, I did want to just flag, I, you know, thinking of, of what Member Clancy just said, right, the, the DESE standard is that superintendents have smart E goals now, right, um, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound, and now inclusive and equitable. Um, and I, I feel like the, the language of the goals in every case is sort of, um, it, there's this real wish to kind of get us into that sort of like visionary strategic part at the beginning. Um, and I'm struggling because I know that they have to be specific and they kind of land there at the end. But I feel like sometimes we've got some stuff happening at the beginning that's, that's not gonna be something that we could measure. Um, that, setting that aside, the impact evidence in every case isn't actually evidence of the goal. 
Um, and maybe I'm just looking at this sort of too um, narrowly or specifically or definitively or something, but uh, you, the, the, you, the evidence of the goal is, is in every case the actual percentage or the actual data that's cited by the goal. Um, and I, I just, I guess I feel uncomfortable with the fact that it kind of doesn't say that anywhere, that like the evidence of the 10% narrowing is gonna be the actual student and staff demographics. And the evidence of the, you know, 100% completion is gonna be the completion of the emergency projects. And I mean, not to be reflexive, but um, the, the other things may be side effects or they may not be, um, I will say, as someone who taught and had those 6 a.m. conversations with myself as to whether or not I was, you know, was it gonna be better to go in sick or deal with the next day's outfall of having had a sub all day? Um, I'm not always entirely convinced that we wanna decrease staff, ab staff absenteeism. Um, I understand that there's a notion that people stay out because they are disaffected, um, but sometimes people stay out because they're sick and sometimes they should. And I'm, I'm not thrilled about that one. Um, I'm uncomfortable, I understand, I appreciate the, the acknowledgement that we're, um, we're talking about a goal that um, we haven't actually seen the, the list for and it's gonna have financial implications in terms of the, um, the security audit. I, um, I appreciate that it's an emphasis, um, I think that's fine. And then I, I appreciate Member Clancy's flagging of the final one because we, re we really can't, as much as I think there's general agreement that we need to be having a focus on student achievement and student performance, um, we really can't pass a goal that's gonna require evidence that we're not gonna have. Um, and we just, got the, we just got the MCAS data and the accountability data on Tuesday. Um, this is when it comes out every year. We can't evaluate the superintendent in June on data that comes out in September. So we do have to come up with a, something else. Um, I mean, I was gonna stand up and say that I don't, I'm not sure I actually understand what's going on here because there isn't such a thing as a DESI accountability score. It seems like we're talking about the, the, the relative percentage um, has held against other school, schools, um, which I would very vigorously argue against us doing um, for the very simple reason that if everybody improves, you can do a really fantastic job and stay in exactly the same place. Um, and I don't think that's what anybody really wants. But it sounds like the larger question is, what are we gonna use if we're gonna evaluate the superintendent in June if this isn't data that we actually get until September? So um, I, I don't have an answer, um, but I would, be, I, I would say that we need to have an answer in order to actually pass the goal. Otherwise, um, thank you, and I, I again, wanna stress that general focus and thrust and areas are exactly, I think, where they should be. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, member Milman, followed by Member Kamara. What's that? No, they had, they all had, I, I, okay. We can go next, I don't think Sue minds. So. Member Kamara? No, go ahead. Thank you. Well, um, I just wanna say thank you so much to the superintendent and her team um, for putting together such expansive um, documentation with evidence as we have had, as we have, we see it right now. Um, I think, you know, um, all of the items that all the folks have mentioned, um, I just wanna just, you know, quickly, um, you know, say thank you for, for that again, but then also I wanna um, just um, add some, add my voice to, you know, the, the, the item point on your goal number one, for the district goal number one and how that impacts, um, you know, like the student goal, um, because I, I, I do feel like, you know, to decrease daily, daily staff absence system, and I think that would really impact other things, like for example, reading um, and other outcomes, um, ec um, academic out outcomes for students in the district. Um, one thing that also struck my, um, my curiosity, but then also strike my enthusiasm for this work that you've put together um, is the fact that before we, you know, didn't have guidebooks for a lot of things and, and, and um, in a huge system like WPS, I think providing guidebooks for, you know, different level of staff members and principals and um, how we go about what we are saying that we're going to do, I think those are um, 
certainly worthwhile and um, not just having guidebooks, right, because, you know, um, but also how the intention to train staff ongoingly um, to ensure that the items in the guidebook and all of the, book, all of the um, content area are um, understood by staff members across the district, um, you know, from the, from the, the high level to staff that are working in the classroom with, with students. Um, so that's um, really exciting to see. Um, I also want to highlight your multi-year objective as, so, as someone who likes to see the full picture of something and then go back to see how we achieve that year by year or month by month, I think that's certainly worthwhile. Um, so to see you know, um, your attention to detail in those areas and to um, back it up with your rationale with evidence from you know, data um, backup that we have here from articles, those are well presented. Um, yeah, so overall, I, you know, I think to, um, you know, for folks who are listening or folks who you know, are interested in how the district is gonna move forward now and going forward, I think you know, a review of this information and deep diving into it um, is clearly one ways in which that you know folks can get that information, and I'm certainly optimistic and um, and you know on grade level three reading. Um, that's a huge last you know that's a huge um, indicator because that that supports the whole development of student as they go from you know fourth grade and up until they graduate from our public school, and that can also um, support how they stay, you know, if they choose to stay or drop out. So um, those indicators, or the fact that our attention to that, to that is, you know, it's 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 um, we have a plan. I think um, I'm excited to see, and I'm really also excited to to see the numbers as they come through um, to to look at, you know, school wide, but then also looking at specifically looking at the schools that have been underperforming in those areas. So I'm really excited to see your attention to detail to that matter. That. We have a bigger, you know, system, but then also we're paying attention to the schools um, that aren't doing so well to catch them up. Um, one thing I will say sometimes when we're trying to, you know, um, go deeper and to, you know, to address schools that you know are um, at the 20% or below, you know, sometimes other things that we're doing so successfully well tends to flare up. So um, just for us to keep our attention to other, um, you know, ways in which to support other schools as well as you know paying attention to. Um, the schools that really need and the students that really need those support. So I just want to say thank you for this. This is technically what we talked about, uh, what I've been talking about this entire time. So thank you. Thank you. Member Mailman. I'll be brief. Um, I just, if any students are listening, I want to comment that actually for profit business only works if we have good relationships too. I just want to share that. There you go. Touché. And then um, number two, I appreciate the deeper dive. I think this is good. I, I might be sacrilege to say this, but is there any reason why we couldn't hold the goal until September when the scores come out? So something to consider. You know, we just said, oh, we have to have other goals because we can't, we won't have anything in June. Well, what if we just hold those till December, I, September? Again, pe people might jump out of their seats, but um, I was really happy to see the staff retention rates. That's something I was like shocked that we didn't have. So that was really cool. And, um, and then that the one that blows me away the most is by 2026, develop and identify ongoing revenue streams for a master facilities plan. Yikes, That's, that would be an incredible goal and take many partners to get on board. So I appreciate the strength of that goal. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. I'm Member Johnson. Thank you to the chair. Um, as everyone's already, you know, talked about uh, your, your report and really appreciate it and, and the work that you put into it. I know there's some questionable things that I know you and your team will work on and bring that back to the table. I just wanted to just get up and just highlight something that I kind of thought about over the past couple of days after going through this and reading the handouts that you had given regarding black students who you know, have at least one black teacher are more likely to graduate in a 
Latino teachers matter. A new study reveals how important they really are. <clears throat> and as I was sitting down looking at this and, 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 and really thinking about it, I, I kind of went back and realized that when I was in school 40 something years ago in elementary, not 40 something years ago, in elementary, I had one black teacher in first grade. And I could tell you that throughout the rest of my school career here in Worcester, that I never had one black teacher that taught me from the rest of middle school, I mean elementary, middle school, or high school. And I then sat and thought and said, damn, 30 something years later, my daughter is now in ninth grade and she has not sat in front of a teacher that looks like her. 30 something years later. And we're having this conversation. And I'm glad that this is on the forefront and that we're talking about that because there are many, many students in the Worcester Public Schools as we look at the number of students that of students of color, BIPOC community, that are sitting in classrooms here in Worcester and could sit for their whole school experience here and never experience sitting in front of someone that looks like them and that they could relate to. So, you know, I just wanted to say that in, in whatever, because I, I just find that to be fascinating to me that, um, you know, 30 something, 40 years later that we're, we're, we're having this conversation. But again, thank you for the report and looking forward to the work that we do moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank Madam Superintendent for the report. This is probably one of the better ones I've seen. And uh, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you to your staff. And, and if you wait until September, that means we, we can't improve the goals until September. That means they have the years half over. So we're in this like catch 22. But uh, we can try to figure that out. So um, we get several months. So uh, good job. Through the chair, thank you. There's, um, if I may say, I, I recognize some of what um, is when we we you know so. Um, Ashley and I work a lot on these back and forth, and so what I recognize what you're saying. You're wondering if. Like, let's take the first district goal. Um, and would I be turning in evidence, for example, on the 10% narrowing of the gap in addition to turning in evidence on daily absenteeism, grievances, and the increase in BIPOC? And the answer is yes, it's both. So I, I can see how it, we wrote it in my head. I'm thinking, yes, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do these other things. Um, but that's not the way it's read. So I understand that part, so I want to clarify that, um, that the, um, all of these things, evidence will be brought forward on. I also want to, I realize somewhere along the line, I'm not sure how it happened, but on the student goal, on the impact evidence, there's a really important bullet that's missing from that, and that is, um, I don't refer to them correctly here. So in California, we, we refer to when we, a student exits the English learner program, they're called reclassified students. Here it's called, what is it? What? Reflep, right? Is that what it is? Reflep, okay. Former. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I'll get the language down, but um, that's going to be another piece of impact evidence. Um, we will increase the number of students that are flipped. Um, and that'll, that'll be part in there. <laughs> Just, because again, if I'm saying that, um, you know, going back to the accountability measurement, the importance of children's um, English proficiency, especially before they enter our secondary schools, if they start with us in kindergarten and they're identified as language learners, um, by the time they are ready to move into the secondary schools, we should have them flipped. Um, they may choose, again, to stay in a dual immersion program if that's what they choose. But if we are not doing um, what we need to in terms of tracking them and monitoring and 
putting in the necessary interventions, um, we are setting them up for um, some lack of access in the secondary setting, and um, we, we can't do that. And so that'll be something that I will definitely be adding to the student goal in terms of impact evidence. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Number Novik. Okay, so with that in mind, then let me make the following motion since we do actually have to vote the goals. Um, and appreciating um, Member Melman's point, if what you're gonna be doing is effectively sort of holding yourself accountable and asking us to hold you accountable for the impact evidence in every case, what if we took that increasing the DESI accountability piece and pushed it off to the side and called it something else, like with, you know, a projected impact or something like that, where we, of course, will have that conversation a year from next meeting. So, like, that's not going to go away. No one's going to be ignoring that. But essentially, what the district is going to do is say, hey, look, we're working on the third grade reading. We're working on the student engagement. We're working on that former student, like, moving students into English proficiency, which is then going to have the impact on this other stuff. We're going to hold you accountable as the superintendent for these other pieces with the idea that if essentially we all end up being held accountable by when DESI then comes out in September with the impact. Does that work? Okay. So that would be my motion just to sort of shuffle that over essentially and make the goal the impact evidence. And that then keeps us on the same calendar, really doesn't change anything too substantially here, um, and then allows us also to then say, you know, we accept the department's going to have a sort of a judgment, but we also are going to make our own judgment based on the evidence we have in June. Member Kamau. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I would kind of like to kind of um, get a, um, what you call it, like a, vert, like a visual of this. Um, because I want to understand what it is that we're, I'm, I'm, up, I'm open to pushing things as you see fit. Um, but I want to kind of understand the importance of each of the things that we're pushing um, as, it, as, uh, as it relates to what it is that we have to do for in our district in terms of um, re-evaluating you or evaluating you, but then also seeing the outcomes um, fall within the district among students. Through the chair, Member Kamara, specifically as it relates to this, I mean, well, all of the goals, but yeah. to the recommendation that is being made, or the amendment, to, so what that would look like. Um, and so I'm, I'm more than willing to bring that. We could maybe hold this and I could bring just a one pager that would have all the different goals clearly identified it's, if, if that is so what, but I think you guys have to vote on something first, right? Okay, we're just suggesting to hold it and come back again. Um, no, I think you have to vote on yeah. the recommendation, yes. and then um, if as that amended. doesn't happen, then correct. As amended by Member Novick. Correct. Yep. Okay. So. That fine, everybody. Member Kamau. Thank you. So, um, if I'm hearing correctly, we're going to vote on the goals as we heard it from you today. Um, and then we're going to get the, the visual of um, what we're going to be pushing off until September. No, if, if I understand correctly, there is a motion on the floor, correct? So you, you all have to vote on the motion on the floor to accept the goals as written with the, the amendment. Yep. Um, and then if that doesn't pass, and either way, I can bring um, what this looks like, but it would be after the vote. Right, okay. Yes. So yeah. can we take those votes, um, two different things? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. So the first vote is to take the superintendent's uh, goals as amended. You have a question? Member um, Mailman? Can someone just let me know why, through the chair, why it has to be tonight? Because we have a motion. You get them done, why not tonight? I guess I'm unclear. I, so I think, I think Member Novick is saying that yes, let's the the, the measurement is going to be the scores. No. Okay. I don't know what she's. Uh, Member Novick, can you please clarify? Your <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
All right, so here is my, here is my motion, and this is, in, this is the only thing that I am making a motion on, okay? On the slide that says student goal, which if I had better eyesight, I could tell you what number it is. It's agenda page 48, okay? I am making a motion that we take the three bullets on the left-hand side, both of which start with increasing, increasing the DESE accountability score in each of those cases, and essentially we cut them out of the goal, okay? With the idea that the, the administration is going to come back and talk to us about accountability scores next September, come hell or high water. And essentially then take <clears throat> the impact evidence, the increased grade three, the increase the percentage of students in grades seven through 12, and what the superintendent just talked about in terms of the moving students into English proficiency, and make those the student goal instead, because those are, that's data that we actually will have in June. And it's also honestly locally data. So that is my motion so that we can actually have, a, have goals for the superintendent and thus the district to move forward with this evening. Thank you. Awesome. So we'll take that as amended. Then we'll do the second vote after that. Oh, you want to speak again? Yeah, I just want to ask the question. Oh, sure. Member yeah. Kamara. Thank you. Um, so I just want to be clear that the goal of um, uh, about, let's see this. <laughs> Improvement on the goal by the end of 2023, 24, that's, re that's relating to the, the reading. Um, is that going to be what we're going to get from you prior to? Madam Superintendent. That's, that's what you will get. So I have a mid-cycle review in, um, in December. Uh -huh. So you'll get an update on how all of these are progressing. And then in the evidence that I submit um, in June, you will see how our third graders did com last year compared to this year. Is that your question? Yeah. That's yep. It. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? You want to do a roll call? No. Well, good. All those in favor? Opposed? So ordered on the uh, the goals as amended. Then we have a second motion by Member Kamara that we have a visual presented to us um, from the superintendent um, for the next meeting. Or okay. All those in favor? Opposed, Member Kamara. So, um, to be honest, I'm not in a rush of any of this stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but I mean, let me be clear. I am not in a rush of the fact that we have goals, and you know, you brought this to the table to us. Um, it will, it will be great for us to see, you know, what is moving forward. I mean, what we are going to be seeing by the end of um, the school year 24. Yes, 24. Um, and then what we're moving, because I just need to see the visual. Um, so that one, you know, um, I'm okay, and I trust the um, the superintendent to be able to give that to give that to us, whether if it's in our what's happening. But I'm also thinking that maybe if people, all the people want to see this, also, I think it's also we should not bar other people who wants to see this information because it's only given to us. So if there's a way for everybody else to see that information, um, that that's what I'm going to call for. Okay, Madam Superintendent. Through the chair member, Kamara, um, if you'll re tell me if this will work. So previously with the goals we did last year, I started bringing them every time we would do a report of the superintendent and connect to there. Yeah. So I was planning on doing the same with that. So it would show all three, well, it'll show four goals because I've got four goals. Um, and then what's the evidence? And so you'll see that every time we do a presentation. So I th will that meet the need? And then I could also take those same goals and put them on the website for people to see as well. Right. Okay. So, but that's um, that's going forward, right? As you start to do the goals. But I'm saying, like, now, like between now and however time you take for us to get that one pager. Oh no, I can. That'll be easy. We'll have that for the next report of the superintendent. Thank you. You're welcome. And then I'm sorry. Then what I was saying also, if people want to see that, because those um contents that are shared between all of us the school committee members are not seen by the public so how can we make that document then public so i'll take that saying those that we'll probably make it in a slide and i'll put that on um the superintendent's web page okay thank you welcome okay all those in favor opposed so ordered We're in N, approval of the grants and other finance items. You can take those collectively in a roll call. If anybody has any questions, so roll call. Member Clancy? Yes. Vice Chair Johnson? Yes. Member Kamara? Yes. Member Mailman? Yes. Member McCullough? Yes. Member O'Connell Novick? Yes. Mayor Payne? Yes. 
Okay, we did all already. Next, we have to enhance nutrition lunch options as possible to line up with the dietary and cultural needs. Member McCullough. Thank you. And um, I know we have done a lot of work on this already with nutrition, but I think certainly we heard earlier from comments the importance of making sure that it's consistent throughout the district and that we're providing a variety of options that do meet the needs and that I think the suggestion of um, utilizing people from the cultural and religious leaders, that that is something that we do along with nutrition. I actually know when I filed this item, there was a recent update of some new hiring within nutrition and I think it will probably tag along a little bit with that position as well. Um, so I think that we're in good shape with that. So I'm fine with that just going to F&O. Okay, so send it to F&O. Oh, member come out. You, you, want to you all done, member? Yeah, I have two more items. That's what I just said. Oh, no, I think member Kamara wants to speak. So thank you. Um, I do want to, you know, thank my colleague for this uh, item here. And because I, I want to, I, there was a time where, what, what, there was a time, <laughs> last year that was a time, where we, um, you know, engaged with this conversation in F&O and, um, with the you know, nutritional director, um, Dr. Limbardi, and we talked a whole length about providing cultural co foods within our district, um, and we made, we made tours to the high schools. I think one of the things that still, at that time, and to this day, I think stands as a um, question for all of us, and, and why we're here again with the same item, is um, the matter of the fact that we're still talking about this, but then we're also talking about it in the fact that we're not still seeing these things in our district being perpetuated within our you know, um, middle schools and our, our what now, elementary schools. So I'm just a little bit confused because like we went to places and we saw and we listened and we were told like these are going on and not even these are going on. We tasted, I tasted some of the food, you know, they had the different things so like what what is the stagnation? So I'd like to understand what has been the barrier between last year and this year um, to the point where like, we're not able to accommodate other you know, immigrants, um, not even to accommodate because some of the immigrants' um, style of eating is, is consistent within a culture already among our students that has been here. Um, so that's, yeah. No, good point. Madam Superintendent. Ms. Allen, can you come in? Because um, I know we've, we've talked about this. Um, I know it's a variety of, of different things, but I, and I, I do believe we can, we can find some, so go ahead. So simply, there's been some procurement challenges on getting um, culturally, culturally appropriate food, but I think the larger conversation can happen in standing committee where we can give um, the work that we're doing and then improvements that we can still make to the system. Okay, good. Member Kamara, do you have a follow up? Yeah, um, I would like to make a motion if, well, that's going to go into um, FNO for us to get an update on these things um, because, and I don't know if I should wait for that to go to FNO and then we do that in there. Um, but I think I see, yes. Okay, thank you. We'll, yes, go to FNO. Okay, Member Johnson. Okay, so we are going to send this to FNO and ask for an update on the uh, dietary and cultural needs. Okay, those in favor, opposed, so or to receive an update on fund utilization for money which the public schools received to support Afghan refugees. Uh, Member McCullough. As it reads. Those in favor, opposed, so ordered. On to review the update policy regarding the process of students who have completed the program for the new citizen center and are moving to another Worcester Public School. Thank you, and on this one I um, would like, I had actually, I think, was unsure at the time, but uh, it should go to cover governance because it's a policy with credits and then if it needs to go over to TLSS, then we can move it over there as well, but I think it has to do with credits as well too. Oh, sorry, Member Novick? Oh, sorry. <laughs> called on you like I was in my meeting. Okay, so we're going to send that to our governance. All those in favor, opposed, so awarded. I'll try to think so. I had a question, thank you. <laughs> I 
appreciate my colleague's acknowledgement. Um, so do we actually have a policy, a, a policy on the new Citizen Center? And I don't mean to, to sort of be picky about this, but my sense is what we probably have is a procedure, in which case this is gonna be going to administration, and that's why I asked the question. And I'm not trying to take anybody's power away from anything, I just, I think that this is like an internal processing thing, which we don't get involved in until we actually get to high school, right? I mean, it, and seriously, correct me if I'm wrong about any of this. Um. I I Madam think, Superintendent, or uh, I just I would be fine with it going to administration. That's fine. I was that was I had some questions about it before, so I acknowledge that that is probably the more appropriate place for this, and administration is fine with me. Okay, so you guys comment or? through the chair. Just just so we are bringing back some of what you're looking for. So I believe what this is is looking at is um, some of what we heard where students are getting lost in the shuffle. Would it also include? Um, the exiting of new center, new citizen center two. So what's the process for exiting? What's the criteria? And then how do we make sure children don't get lost? Is yes, thank you. That would be helpful overall because I think we've had some questions this year of all different grade levels as well and then transitioning to out to other schools. And I, I think to the point too of not getting lost in the shuffle for some of the older students, but so overall. So administration is fine with me on this because it is more procedure than policy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sent the administration. All those in favor, post so ordered. Request the administration for implementation of the workday system, including the necessary policy and budgetary implications. Member Novick. As it reads. All those in favor, post so ordered. Request that the administration report on the information technology systems implementation and needs, including as necessary policy and budgetary implications. Member Novick. As it reads. All those in favor, post so ordered. Okay, announcements, we can follow those. Those in favor, opposed, so ordered. And uh, we have a motion to adjourn. We missed one, I'm sorry. No, that, those are for the meetings coming. I thought the same thing, I thought. No, I thought the same thing. I said, I have to listen to four of these, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, so motion is to file. All those in favor, opposed, so awarded.